team game. Got to see her two different times, which we might very well see in this game yeah. too. Very possible. The sophomore from Georgia. And she's going to throw more to her arm side, likes to rely on her rise ball as well as her screw ball. So inside to righties and away from lefties, just like that. The difference maker against FSU was the location of her changeup. It's a great pitch for her when she mixes it in. It keeps hitters off balance, but the location is what we'll pay attention to against a potent Georgia offense. Dallas Goodnight in the leadoff spot in this game, playing center field. She bumps up to the top spot of the batting order. After hitting in the eight hole in the first game today, that's just out in front of the plate. Palacios unable to throw out the speedy good night, and that's the way the game begins. The next batter is the third baseman, Sarah Mosley. There's the lineup for head coach Tony Baldwin. Shifting things around a bit, Mosley, who had been leading off, batting in the two spot. Lindy Ray Davis is going to do the catching and hit fourth, and Jaden Fields. Would be the DP. Here goes the runner. Good throw, close but safe. And Sarah Mosley swinging for protection on that steal. You might have seen that it's a bit of an awkward swing, not your typical Sarah Mosley swing whatsoever, but they put good night in motion, and Sarah Mosley swings just for protection to try to hold up Brady for just a split second longer to help Dallas Goodnight get in there safely. Here's a big rip from Mosley, and it's no balls, two strikes. First team all SEC the last two seasons. Sarah Mosley. Off the end of the bat, out to right field. Megan Grant now comes in. Tagging, good night, headed to third. A two hop throw there is a bit up the line. Good night advances 60 feet to third. She's there with one out. I can tell the good arm that Megan Grant has out in right field, though. I mean, Dallas Goodnight has serious speed, and that ball well, got there at right about fielder. the same time that she did. And you can tell, too, now that Dallas Goodnight is on, Georgia trying to score early, not wanting to wait until the later <laughs> innings like they have in the past two games. Here we go. That oh, is I called foul. I thought that was fair. Well. Tony Baldwin, the head coach, is right there at the third base coach's box. He's not disputing this. Let's yeah. look how close. It's a great look from down the line. And yeah, it's foul. Yeah. I know when Tony Baldwin didn't argue with it, we probably got the optical illusion looking through the screen. 0 oh 2. I get that curveball that Tinsley has been throwing today to right-handed hitters, too, when she's located that pitch a little bit off the plate, got good break about knee high. It's been an effective pitch. Goes right back to it again to see if she can get Kearney to swing and chase that pitch a little bit more off the plate. And we're going to be looking for Tinsley to have a put-away pitch with two strikes. It seems like several hits that she's given up today in the season already have been on in two-strike counts. Get that pitch down, but it's hit towards right center field. And well, it's really carrying all the way out to the base of the fence. It'll score good night. And Kearney's at second with an RBI double. And just like what we were just talking about, another two strike hit. This one an 0 2 pitch, a changeup, but just does not fool Kearney enough. Able to stay in her legs and stay on that pitch to still drive it to the bottom of the field or the bottom of the fence. First run for Georgia, score early. For the first time here in Clearwater, they have scored first. Gives the catcher, Lindy Ray Davis, an opportunity with a runner in scoring position and still only one out. Play left side off the screen. Lindy Ray Davis was used as a pinch hitter. 
in the earlier game against Oklahoma State and came off the bench and hit three run home run. Against Lexi Kilfoyle, who had just entered yeah. that game. You bring up the subject of Kilfoyle, who took over for Acock of Oklahoma State. And when Kilfoyle came in, who's one of the top pitchers around, things changed offensively for Georgia. Like they were very prepared to hit off of Lexi Kilfoyle. Great game plan. That's whack deep left center field and ranging over. It's run down by Alchin. Fires it in and keeps Kearney at second base. Good swing by Lindy Ray Davis again. Several good swings in this inning by Georgia. Lindy Ray Davis is able to handle low in the zone well. It's the same pitch that she saw against Kilfoyle that she hit out of here and got that outside pitch. It's a good swing by Davis. Ball went low to Sydney Kuma. One for four in the win over Oklahoma State earlier today. Another run scored. Off to a nice start. Ooh, that looked like a good pitch. Good spot, but Sydney Kuma shakes her head after it. Like, no, it's not a strike. Well, for you UCLA fans who were watching us on ESPNU just a short time ago. The umpiring crew has changed. That's a pitch that probably would have been a strike. That's a foul ball. Foul ball, they're saying. I think they're going to send her back to second base. So behind the plate in this game, we got Matt Dial. Scott Mayer was the plate umpire in the game that just finished a short time ago, Florida State UCLA. Like so many umpires in our sport, their name, not all, but so many, are short and sweet and pretty easy, like Matt Dial, Scott Mayer, Shane Jackson, Tammy Cooper. Just as somebody so, that has a longer last name that's given me struggles <laughs> early in my life and other people's struggles, I notice those kind of things. So that's a prerequisite, short names. A Scarborough is not going to make it an umpire <laughs> for a lot of reasons. There's right. also Marty Abzishan, though, and that's probably Abzishan, the hardest yeah. one that's out there. Just thoughts from my brain. That is a thought from game three of the day and game six in two days <laughs> here in Clearwater. So, but I like where your mind's going. Here's a 3-2 <laughs> pitch. Close, perhaps a bit inside. So Kuma reaches on a walk. Keeps the inning going with two on, two outs. Sydney Chambly batting here. Some close pitches that Georgia is taking confidently. On nips the inside corner. Georgia has played a run so far here in the top of the first, scoring first for the first time against their opponent here in Clearwater. Off speed strikeout gets Chambly to win the inning. The plate, big time competitor, relies more on her arm side of the plate. So out in that red area, outside to righties, inside to lefties. But she's grown her ability to throw more to her glove side of the plate this year. Like that. Right on cue. Maya Brady, left-handed hitter. Shortstop for UCLA coming off a two-homer game. And a win just a short time ago against Florida State. Three-run homer and a two-run homer in her last two at-bats of that game. 
Baez up top after the multi-homer game. Woolery had three hits. Grant had three hits, so that Woolery-Grant combination 3-4 once again in this game for Kelly Inouye Perez. Golfed first and on the fly, caught by Emily Digby. The next batter, the second baseman, Savannah. There's Savipola. Who walked three times in the win over Florida State and also hit a home run her first of the year. Hit one homer a year ago and was the only Bruin to start all 59 games last year. Yeah, I felt like she was a big spark for them last game. Really big. The only out she made was her last time up where she lined out sharply to left field. So are we going to see here is part of the storyline the Bruins who were really struggling basically all around but definitely offensively going into the Florida State game. Is that Florida State game kind of fool's gold in your mind or is that the start possibly of UCLA being UCLA? I think that is the start of UCLA's 2024 identity. And we've seen other teams have this identity, this slug it out identity, outscore. Looks like it's going to stay in play, but a tough play right near the edge of the dugout, and Digby makes it. Nice play by the freshman there, battling the edge of the dugout. The next is the first a little bit of breeze, Jordan a little bit of sun. Good look at field nine here at the Eddie Seymour Complex. Whack down the right field side and slice foul off the bat of Jordan Woolery. Little well, souvenir? We do need that back, man. You can keep the water bottle. We need the softball. <laughs> Another one in that direction. Look out over at field eight. But I think that this UCLA offense is capable of having that identity to outslug, out hit, outscore opponents. Of course, you always want to do that with any offense, but the way it seems like UCLA might be giving up runs this year, they're going to have to put a bit more offense on the board for their team, find different ways to win games. And I mean, if it comes down to be 10 or 14 to 10, like it was last game, then so be it. If it's 20 to 19, we got to find a way to outscore our opponent any way we can. And they have the power to do it. They have the experience to do it. Players like Jordan Woolery, Megan Grant on deck, Charlize Palacios, Jane Alchin transferring from Washington. They have a lot of at-bats and experience in their lineup, and they're fully capable of being one of the best offenses in the country. That's to right field. Kearney back and snags it. Almost came out of the glove. But down in order goes UCLA. Nice play by J.D. Kearney to win the inning. one nothing Georgia at the end of one. Jaden Fields, big first game earlier today. The win over Oklahoma State. She went three for three with RBI. You were wondering if brother Justin Fields may be hanging around the complex at some point, but since he finished so well quarterbacking the Chicago Bears, he's now got some pull with uh, the Bears and whoever needs quarterback. He might not have been able to get a ticket to this event. Well, awesome. Sold out. You know, not only had they not scored early here in Clearwater, they hadn't scored the first inning all season until this game eight of the year for the Bulldogs. Popped up to first, Jordan Woolery behind the bag in foul territory. You could tell that when Dallas Goodnight had that swingy bunt and got on first base, they were at their, that was their mission. They were dead set on scoring her, and they did, because knowing that they had not scored the first inning all season, 
trying to break through. They have the offense to do that, to score early in a lot of games and late. Big time Georgia offense. Okay, later in the game, when we talk to the Georgia head coach, Tony Baldwin, I'm gonna tell you what my question is right up front. Tony, did you say we gotta score first in, first in the first inning and let him see where he goes? Let's see. Yeah. A little tease for a couple innings from now. I think you're on to something, though, because when you fall behind 4 nothing twice, they fell behind to Wisconsin 4 nothing, came back one in extra innings yesterday, down 4 nothing earlier today to Oklahoma State, 1-7-4. Got in on the hands and it's popped in the air out to the shortstop, Brady, in shallow left field. Bigby pops out, two away. The next batter is the shortstop, Ellie Armistead. Is Ellie Armistead? Ellie, a couple of the bats in the first game. It's OSU today, 0 for 2. Does have a homer on the year after hitting three a season ago in 57 games as the shortstop. Out of play. Just no easy game here at this tournament at all. I mean, looking no. at what a team like Wisconsin has done, took the lead against Georgia in the game against them, and Georgia did come back and win, but Wisconsin right now playing Oklahoma State next door. Strike on the high outside edge to Armistead. Now Wisconsin's still up five to two next door, by the way. Stanford up on, maybe that's not next door. I don't, I can't remember, but Stanford, uh, Tennessee, <laughs> Stanford, Tennessee <laughs> is still going on. Top of the seventh, Stanford up one to nothing against Tennessee. The 2 2 pitch to Armistead. Shallow right, Megan Grant. Tinsley's. Our game, by the one, is the one up top left, by the way, in case you lost track. <laughs> Which is easy to do with so much softball yeah, happening at I, one time. Well, I was confused myself for a moment <laughs> trying to figure out which one we were. There we go. A great weekend. So many top teams here. Big time players, all Americans. Grant, hot shot, short hop pick. I'll tell you what, Ellie Armistead can pick that thing at shortstop, folks. She can. She has gotten better defensively every year of her Georgia career, in large part to JT D'Amico coming over to be the defensive coach from Washington. And she's really soaked up everything that he's taught her, and so has Sydney Kuma. Their middles have really thrived under JT D'Amico's tutelage. And that retires a leadoff batter, Grant, catcher Charlize Palacios. And we've seen a couple of hops at the shortstop position on this field eat up shortstops, and she played that with such smooth, easy hands. Made it look very simple. It's gonna twist back, and it will be near the stands, and it's caught. Speaking of Sydney Kuma, from her second base position, coming across there into foul territory. And it's because she communicated so early. Watch Digby pull out immediately. Kuma called it very That's early, that knowing that she had to beat on that ball. That would have been a much tougher catch for Digby. She was going to for sure go for it. But Kuma taking leadership, calling her off early for her to get out of the way and be able to make that catch. I think she also told the first base umpire to get out of the way. <laughs> had to high tail it out of there. Tammy Cooper had to motor out. Here's Lisa Fernandez, yeah. coaching first. Talking about Hall of Famers and Olympic gold medalists and all the other accolades you said we were representing here. Lisa Fernandez does a lot of that and just one individual. 
This tournament is the who's who of college softball. You are correct. Oh, that came from the other field, field eight. JTA to say, oh, I'll get that. We can play on. Two balls, no strikes. Jade Lidalchin, SoCal native from Huntington Beach. She was transferred in after playing at Washington, now much closer to family in SoCal. I'm always interested to see if anybody can make it through this tournament undefeated. Usually there's not more than one team, I feel like, that makes it through undefeated, maybe two. Your memory is much better than mine. Last year, did anybody finish undefeated? I don't think so, did they? Oh, man. Oh, if I put you on the spot. All right, then my job here is done. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely remember what happened in our games earlier I, today. I, know, never okay. <laughs> I do uh, remember a couple of years ago when Texas did the opposite. Yes. They didn't win any games, and they wound up going to the championship series for the national title. We're national runner-up to OU. They turned it on in the postseason, that's for sure. I love fans who bring the scorebook. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that's apparent. I'm going to say odds are that the answer is yes. But I don't have any proof of that. And that's ball four. Two out walk. Puts Jade Lenolchin aboard. So did she, did she just write BB? I assume yes. that's yeah. based on balls. My, parent, my mom kept score until I was through high school and then in college it was she just said that's no more somebody that. else is getting paid to do that now on the <laughs> collegiate staff I'm not going to do that kind of keeps you occupied though throughout the game right it keeps you locked in <laughs> Tessamala Ulu at the plate Picked up a couple RBIs in the earlier win against Florida State since she didn't play last year due to injury. First RBIs uh, in a while, going back to the 2022 20, season. If you're UCLA or a UCLA fan, you just have to feel probably so much better after winning that first game and, and putting up 14 runs on the scoreboard. After last weekend, going two and three. That's deep center field off the bat of Tessamala Ulu and Knocked down there by Goodnight. Here comes Alchin for the plate, and she will score. A double for Tessa Malaulu. Two RBIs in the earlier game today against Florida State. Gets one here, ties it at one. Well, and one thing you need to know about this field, and we probably have about three things, okay? But one of them is that walks are going to come around and score on this field. And that's just in the game in general, but two out walk to Jadlin Alchin. Good job by her getting on base, and then Malaulu stepping into one and driving it to the fence, and Alchin easily going to be able to score from first base. So Malaulu back and healthy is a great sign. Someone who has really been known more for her glove than her bat, and if that bat starts coming around this year, in her senior year, that would be a big plus for the Bruins. But that's why I truly believe that game that they had earlier today, despite it being three hours, despite them giving up 10 runs. I mean, after hitting 227 as a team opening weekend, when you have this type of lineup, you needed a game like that to give your hitters and team confidence. Mettler banks one right up the left center alley, and that's going to bring in Malaulu. And now suddenly the Bruins off Lily Backus have taken a two to one lead. Two out scoring. Love to see that in the postseason. We love to see that just as much in February, too. It's always a reminder that two outs scoring, you have three outs in an inning. You want to be able to capitalize on every single out that you have in your offensive half. And UCLA doing just that to take the lead. And Tony Baldwin, whose team scored first for the first time here, is she put UCLA in front. She's a freshman. That's her first career collegiate hit. So congratulations to her on that. There will only be one number one when it comes to hit. Do you remember your first hit in college? I don't. 
There are just so many, they all blend together, huh? And that is inside. Hitting means that little to you that <laughs> you as a pitcher primarily, even though you hit a lot. Hit I hit well. a lot. <laughs> yeah. Hit every day. I just don't remember it. My first game, though, was a no-hitter. So that is easy to remember on the pitching side. So that's why I don't remember if I got to hit that game because I think I was more focused on pitching. Didn't ask you what you did in your first pitching assignment, but I know, you know, thanks I know. for dropping in the no-hitter. TMI. Keeping your vanity in check here. There's a line drive to Armistead to win the inning. A little two-out rally there for the Bruins. They're going up against Kiki Malloy. Fifth one. It's a matchup I would pay to see right there. Yes. Kiki Malloy. Nigel Kennedy, first pitch swinging, dumped out towards left field, and there's a headlong diving play by Taylor Stevens. Good jump by Stevens on this ball. We've seen. Outfielders get mixed around for UCLA because of a couple of injuries. Stevens coming through with a catch. Good read. Big first out. Now Mosley pops it up on the third base side near the stands. And what a catch. Tessa Malaulu, the third baseman, initially went too far towards the stands and then had to back up at the last second and made a great play. Well, this went so high. It gave her a lot of time for her and Brady both to run over there. But look at how she even maneuvers around the umpire, ends up falling into him and holding <laughs> on to it. That ball yeah. just went so high and then it just continued to carry. But Malaulu doing it defensively and offensively for UCLA today. What a play. But did you see the reaction to Shane Jackson, the umpire here? He's following it, he's like, okay, okay, and he's like, uh-oh, I'm in the wrong place here. <laughs> I need to get out of the way. And like, did she catch it? I don't know, my face was towards a different direction. There's so much going on there that is uh, such yeah. good focus because you also kind of feel Maya Brady there, you feel the fence, you feel the umpire, but for her to come away with that catch, it's not easy. I told you she's a great defender, but that's a kind of a play to itself. There's, Hard ground balls, and then there's trying to judge the stands, and as you said, other players, umpire, navigate all that. A little bit of a breeze and still make the play. <laughs> Can't help but laugh, Shane Jessica. Okay, yeah, glad I <laughs> didn't run right into her while she was trying to make that play. You know, oftentimes at third base, I think umpire it can kind of maybe be the more boring base between home plate, which you're getting all the action. They call it first the rocking chair if you're an umpire. Okay. You, yeah, that's supposed to be an easy <laughs> I spot. didn't know that. Yeah. That's so good. So he also has the job of starting the pitch clock. Ooh, that's landing foul. I thought she came crashing into Woolery like, eh, am I going to headlong dive? Is Palacios going to get up here? And so he has that remote right there on his hip that he has his hand on right now, by the way. So additional job for uh, the U3 in our game this weekend. So it's no longer really the rocking chair if you got to pay that close attention. Yeah, because that's a huge part of the game now. Yeah, start the pitch <laughs> clock. Into left field, down for a base hit. Two out single for Jada Kearney, who's now two for two. as She doubled in a run in the first inning. Speaking of pitch clocks, here at the Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational, provided by Whistle Stop and my own snoop can. I'm starting to think that the pitch clocks may be sponsored by you. I don't know. <laughs> is it really Whistle? Yeah. Is, are you a part of Whistle Stop? Yeah. Folks at Whistle Stop, give me a call. We'll, 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 we'll chat. <laughs> you could be the face. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you already are. Who's that jabroni behind the, <laughs> the pitch clock? All those games in Clearwater. <laughs> Lindy Ray Davis smacked the ball hard first time up, lined out to the center fielder, Jalen Olchin. They're coming off the bench and hitting a three-run pinch hit home run in their earlier win over Oklahoma State. <laughs> that ball's rolled deep right and out. Tell you what, Lindy Ray Davis is locked in. She's hitting balls hard and hitting them deep. 
The second home run of the day. And this one puts Georgia back in front three to two. Lindy Ray Davis is rewriting the scouting report that says don't pitch her on the inner half. If you do, it's got to be up on her hands. If it's about thigh high or below, she can lift it out of here. Second home run of the day for Lindy Ray Davis. In the first game, it was a pinch hit home run. Gets to start today. A two, or two run home run the second game today. Sydney Kuma walked in her first plate appearances up with Georgia now ahead three to two. Tony Baldwin wants to talk to Sydney. Kuma, by the way, got her degree in December in sport management. A grad student. Got an experienced player by Kuma. And I think Coach picked up on maybe there. Hard to tell. It is hard to tell. I mean, but they have such a good relationship. But can be something small that we don't know about. Maybe something simple too that if you told us what it was, it's like, oh, you know, of course you told her that. But a senior, so many seniors in this Georgia offense, and they have such a great relationship with Tony because before he even took over as head coach, he was their hitting coach, Lou Harris Champer. So he's been around them a lot, been around the program for a long time, recruited them, probably they came to camps and clinics a lot with them. So they've been around him a lot. He's a big part of this Georgia program. Yeah, he was an assistant for Lou at uh, six, seven years before getting a head job a couple of years ago when Lou Harris Champer resigned after 21 seasons. Three two pitch coming to Sidney Kuma. And she works her second walk. Yeah, both of them were close pitches like that, yeah. too. Taylor Tinsley has issued two walks. They both come to Kuma. Both on full counts. Kuma's been an on-base machine here to start the season. For the Dogs, and a two-out chance now for left fielder Sidney Chambley. It was looking like it was going to be a fast inning. Jada Kearney gets on with a two-strike hit, and the home run, and then the walk. Deep left center field and gone. Chambly. Two run blast and suddenly a four run inning. All with two outs for Georgia. Well, all the scoring in this game have come with two outs and UCLA just did it and then Georgia able to answer right back with their own two out scoring. Excuse me, I forgot about that first inning score by Georgia, but in this inning, just putting it on UCLA with back to back to back hitters, reaching a couple of home runs in this inning alone. Lindy Ray Davis did it, and now Sydney Chambly adds a home run to her stats. Strike one to the outside edge to Jaden Fields, the DP. Three for three earlier today against Oklahoma State. So far, just one plate appearance in this game and fouled out to the first baseman, Jordan Woolery. You know, you said just a moment ago, looked like it was going to be a quick inning, and then you could just put that on, on blast on replay. I think that's happened about 30 times over the last two days. Looked like it was going to be a quick inning, and then... <laughs> <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It has been a challenging field nine couple of days for pitchers. 
A lot of walks, a lot of extra base hits, a lot of hit by pitches. Brady plays the one hop, throws out fields, but seven batters come to the plate and a two out right. It was going to be a quick inning with defense. That's what happens when you're on game three. But then I picked it up, right? You, you, you did. Thank off. you, partner. Appreciate that. Because I said the same thing. I was failing you because that is how it felt. It looked like it was going to be three up, three down, and then it wasn't until it wasn't. Until it wasn't. <laughs> it was until it wasn't. Top of the order, Maya Brady. Lined out the first in the first inning. After homering in her last two at-bats in the earlier win today over Florida State. Brady, what a year last year. Won the Pac-12 batting title. Up for player of the National Player of the Year. Two balls, two strikes. 448, 18 homers, 59 RBIs last year. Which when you put up those numbers, those are great, but then everybody expects you to do that or better the next season, and that's just not realistic. You want it to be realistic if you're the player. Yeah. <laughs> Worked hard in the offseason. I remember last year, too, she had made that transition from center field to shortstop, which that in itself can take a little toll on you. I mean, to play shortstop, you usually are the player that's going to have the most errors on the field. You get the most balls, most action, leader of the infield and she still put up those offensive numbers despite making that defensive change. Back is misses high and it is a full count on Maya Brady leading off the third. Rip fouled on the right field side. It's been fun all these years to, to catch up when we do with Maya Brady and just have the the conversations with her. I remember asking her, like, you know, what, what else did you play besides softball? And she's like, uh, volleyball, flag football, basketball. Chops head out to shortstop. Armistead got her by half a step. Armistead's made some nice defensive plays as well as she normally does at short for Georgia. Sabi Pola. I think flag football is actually going to be in the Olympics. It is. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it's a sport that is growing in popularity just by the second. Zavi shoots it foul. Little floater out to the second baseman, Sidney Kuma. Soft liner is the second out. I like how quickly that Lily Backus works. And all that experience at UNC where she was the ace through 180 innings last season at North Carolina and then decided to come over here and be a Georgia Bulldog. Of course, there was a coaching change that happened at UNC as well. Donna Papa retired and Megan Smith-Lyon took over. Down the right field line, that's going to drop fair. Woolery's going to hold it first as it's played back in by Kearney in a Two out single. Is this is where that story begins. It looked like it was going to be a quick inning, and <laughs> there's another two out hit. <laughs> Little deja vu. It's Woolery's uh, fourth hit of the day. She had three in the first game against Florida State. 
And he ran also had three in the first game. 0 for 1 with a ground out to short in this one against Georgia. And you know, Lily Beck is actually graduated early from high school to enroll at North Carolina to pitch in what would have been her senior year in high school became her freshman year in college. And what's cool about Lily is that she's the first left handed pitcher since Kylie Bass. Remember mm -hmm. Kylie Bass? And she's just five foot five. So smaller stature pitcher and still has all the success. And then Kylie Bass, who was the last left handed pitcher, was even a little bit shorter yeah. than that. Out to left field. Sydney Chambly now coming in. That will end the inning. Two out hit by Woolery. She's left on, and the Bruins have stranded two so far. After three, Evo Shield. Before we head to the fourth inning, let's visit with the UCLA head coach, Kelly Inouye Perez. Let me go back, kind of, you just got a win about 45 minutes ago. Tell me about the, what you saw from your team and offense in that game against Florida State. Oh, you know, I think, bottom line, you saw fight, right? I think we're, we're learning. We're learning that um, that's going to be our, our deal this year. We've got to be able to fight. You know, we're unfortunately giving up some runs, so we've got to be able to answer back. But I like what it's building. It's building a resilience. We've got to be able to come out here and swing it. And the object of the game is to score more runs. So you just saw that last game, and uh, <laughs> it was a dog fight. But I like seeing the fight in my team. Coach, in a tournament with so many great teams like this and your schedule coming out, how do you uh, foresee working your pitchers throughout the rest of the weekend? Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to say I'm – taking it inning by inning. But, you know, we're going to build back our confidence. I'll be honest with you. We're just not at full strength. So um, it is what it is. We're going to build. We're going to continue to get stronger. We're going to continue to uh, find ways to get healthy. We're learning as we go. And, um, you know, obviously I don't have all the answers, but um, we're, they're, they're just being gutsy right now. And the defense is playing nine on one. So we're just going to keep on watching, supporting them. we got to swing our sticks and have her back. Coach, thanks for multitasking. You're catching <laughs> infield balls. You're giving signs. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing interviews. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. I. I love that reaction. You, you, you throw out the where are you going with pitching, and she's just like, well. deep breath. Like, let's think about how I want to answer this. I love that. Such a hard schedule last weekend, this weekend, and the upcoming two weekends when they go to Mary Nutter and then the Judy Garment. I mean, UCLA is playing one of the toughest schedules in the country this year. Let's look at the uh, young staff, the youngest really ever under. Coach Inouye Perez. The freshman, Caitlin Terry, left-handed pitcher who we got to see in last game, too. And we're going to try to figure out ways to win with this staff and figure it out as they go along. She mentioned, though, how big a win that was to beat Florida State. And, and she confessed, hey, you know, we're, we're not 100%. We're, we're not rolling on all cylinders. They came in at two and three. You know, if you lose to Florida State there, now you're two and four. You got the rest of the schedule coming up in Clearwater, and you're going to need a little bit more oil, and who knows what can happen. That was a big win for them over number five, Florida State. Yeah, it was, and... And a hitter. It showed them that we're resilience and maybe how they're going to need to win games, you know, moving forward. And that they can win games like that against a good team. Next batter is the shortstop, Ellie Armistead. Armistead coming up. She hit one to deep right last time. That's what you were seeing Coach Inouye Perez say. And so Armistead says, well, I'm going to put down a bunt. Close safe. Digby hustling down. As they tried to get the lead base runner, but Digby beats the throw, and Georgia has two on with nobody out. You know, and it did sound like everybody was, t was communicating to Tinsley, two, two, two. Ooh, as a very close, close play. I think as closer than everybody thought it was going to be to Maya Brady without even seeing where Digby's foot was could just kind of feel it, the play and her foot hit the bag and she's like, no way. Good athletic play by Tinsley to go for this force out. But you know, right now, uh, the call being safe, even if we had replay, which we don't, I don't think you can overturn that and say that she was out. I don't think so either. I think it would stand as is. The well, top of the order up and Dallas Goodnight, so more excellent speed at the plate for Georgia. 
she wants to move the runners up as well and does so as Malaulu throws her out a sacrifice it goes 5-4 good night does her job getting Digby to third enormous dead down to second Sarah Mosley Sarah Mosley is just not quite seeing the ball the way that Sarah Mosley can see the ball early this season. Even when you see her commit to a pitch before it's even thrown like that, that change up, just kind of guessing a little bit is what it seems. She seems a little bit off with her timing and how she's seen the ball early in the season. But Sarah Mosley, one of the best hitters in the SEC, one of the best hitters in the country, you know that she'll figure it out. 17 home runs each of the last two years with RBI totals in the low 50s each of the last two. You know, it, it's weird because if you hit a string here, and you're only talking, you know, less than 20 at-bats here since the season started, so it's a pretty small sample size. If that 20 at-bat sample size is in the middle of the year, you don't think about it too much, but when it's the beginning, it it's just stands out more. You think, like, ooh, whoa, do I have it still? What, what's going on here? But you know at the end of the day, she's going to be back where she was the last couple of years. Good adjustment there. You see she smiles a little bit because she swung at that pitch earlier in the at-bat and with two strikes, able to take it to work it to this 2-2 count now. It could always be just one pitch, Mark. One pitch, one at-bat that can just get you where you need to be. To short, Brady comes home and a rundown is Digby coming back towards third. Malaulu tagged out. The other runners do move up. So Digby stayed in the rundown long enough that the other runners could move up. So basically a push there, second and third still, but now with two outs. Matters right Jada Kearney. Already had a couple of hits. Drove in the game's first run in the first inning. Coach Inoue Perez. Tonight, the Suns are already setting. They're going to be playing under the lights. Interesting that they're going to intentionally walk Jada Kearney to get to the two <laughs> home run hitter today, Lindy Ray Davis. poison type moment though with the type of hitter that Jada Kearney is and with how Davis is swinging the bat but go ahead and load the bases up give your defense an opportunity to make a play at any bag if it comes to them in the infield well UCLA did not see the Lindy Ray Davis swings that we saw in the first game today and this is not against nothing against Jada Kearney who's swinging the bat really 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 well uh, but from what you and I have seen today uh, I, I would take my chances with Kearney. It may not work out well, but right now, that young lady is seeing it extremely well. Yeah, we'll see how they pitch her because she's owned the inner half today. So they're going to have to work the outside corner and change speeds against her. And if they do go in, it's going to have to be well in. But you'll also have to be careful if you go inside because a hit by pitch is going to score a run. Here's both of her home runs from today. One off of Lexi Kilfoyle as a pinch hit home run. And then this one off of Taylor Tinsley. Both of them over the inner half. Both of them right under the scoreboard. Line drives over the right field wall. That first one right there from Tinsley, talking about the pitch from Tinsley, kind of up and away. I don't, I don't think you can try to work in at all here. I, I think it's too risky. I, I don't think that you can either. No. If you do go in, it has to be way in. But then you risk hit by pitch or her just getting her barrel there. It's up and away again. And you're Lindy Ray Davis. I think you know that that's the side of the plate that you're going to get. You're probably hoping that you get the inner half again because of the yeah. way that you're hitting it. But she should not get inner half in the sit back.
Well, they've obviously adjusted the strategy to just what we were talking about. They're not going to pitch her in. Such a mature at bat by Lindy Ray Davis. It is so easy to go up there with a chip on your shoulder. I can't believe you walked Jana Kearney to get to me, and then you get out of your strike zone, press the issue. And especially when you're seeing the ball like her, you want to hit another that home run. You feel good. You want to maybe push the envelope a little bit and stretch your zone. But for her to take that walk, that is a big time veteran at bat. Kuma rifles one foul. So it seems like Coach Inouye Perez's decision to walk intentionally Kearney was the fact that they knew they were going to pitch Lindy Ray Davis differently. But when she didn't bite on the first two, it almost seemed like a fait accompli there that she's going to walk in a drive in a run. I'm sorry, can you go back to that phrase and spell it? F-A-I-T, A-C-C-O-P-L-I. <laughs> we say it one more time. Say it one more time. Fait accompli. <laughs> yeah. Are we in France right now? If you want to be in France, it's not exactly Epcot, but we can make it France. I do want to be in France, actually. So an RBI for Davis, who has three in this game, three in the previous, and we get a wave and a miss by Kuma and a strikeout. So Georgia settles for one, but they have opened up a four-run lead at the midpoint of the fourth in Clearwater. Bowman, you guys fell behind 4 nothing to Wisconsin, came back a one, fell behind 4 nothing earlier today to Oklahoma State. Then we see... Good night come out to start this game. It seemed like, uh, was there an emphasis on getting the lead first for the first time here in Clearwater today? Well, Chelsea did plead on the bus not to do that anymore. So uh, we <laughs> thought we would try and uh, ultimately what we talked about is just trying to take control of the at-bats a little bit better and being a little more disciplined and, uh, you know, again, play our, to our strengths and uh, not so much on the defensive. And uh, so far, that's that's been a good uh recipe for us. Coach, you guys played, had a game break, and then you played again. Behind the scenes of a college softball team in a tournament like this, what do you guys do in between games? We went back and chilled out for sure and kind of caught our breath and then, you know, just get back to work. You know, it's like an NCAA tournament type of thing. You, you know, the next game is the most important game you play because it's the one you're in it. So uh, that was our mindset is to get back. We've talked a lot about competitive stamina with this group. And if there's a game being played, we want to be competing in it. And uh, so far, so good. Thanks, Coach. It helps to chill even for just a little while, Tony, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks very much. Go back. We do hotel and chill. <laughs> he was talking about Chelsea Wilkinson, the pitching coach. Yeah, hey, stop falling behind 4 nothing. We, we, we can't do that anymore, Chelsea Wilkinson. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's come out and score early and take some pressure off of our pitchers here and not wait until the fourth, fifth, and sixth inning. Or, or how about we just do it? We score in all the innings. We score in the first and we score in the fourth. Which they have done. They've scored in every inning except the second here through the first four. Now in the bottom half, Velocity Seals, the catcher, leads off for UCLA. Charlize has fouled out to the second baseman, Kuma, 0 for 1. It's another hitter that they're looking to get going. More of a slow start for Palacios to start this season, just hitting 231 through the first six games. He takes up high. Palacios, uh, of course, transferred from Arizona. First year with UCLA last year. Hits over 300, 10 homers, and then got hurt fairly late in the year, like April 22nd against Arizona State. Missed some games, quite a few games going down to the tail. And I don't know if that's related or not to the way the season ended for UCLA, but she was a big presence, not available to them late in the season. Absolutely. She is a captain. A leader back behind the plate. Not sure if she's the actual captain. I was going to say captain back behind the plate, but there she goes. Ripping one to right center, but run down by Dallas. Good night. It's Palacios, who, who, who got hurt last year. Her, her left hand got hit on a hitter's backswing, which really made it basically impossible for her to swing the bat at the end of the season. 
and they missed her offensively and just her leadership back behind the plane. The pitching staff. Jaden Alchin jumping on the first pitch, sends it foul out of play. Alchin, a couple of hits, actually a couple of RBIs in the first game earlier today against Florida State. It's got under it out to left center field, but it will carry a ways, but shy of the track for Sidney Chambly. Take a peek at our keys to the season brought to you by Shriners Children's Hospital. What makes the season for both these teams? Well, for Georgia, it's Lily back is to pitch well. The addition of her has given depth to an already really deep Georgia pitching staff, but she comes from the left hand side. Great change up gives a completely different look and won't put as much on Kerpix and Walters. And for UCLA, it's to out hit, outscore opponents. And I think that game one today was a prime example of how they're going to need to win games. They won game one today. 14 to 10. They have the type of offense that can out hit and outscore opponents, and they're going to need to lean on their strength, lean on their offense to help them win games. Tessa Malaulu doubled in a run in the second inning. He's had a three RBI day, had a couple against Florida State. First three of the season. You know, and the great thing about adding Lily back is to their pitching staff where Kerpix and Walters split the majority of the innings last year is that you become harder to prepare for. And Coach Baldwin talked about that, that you can't just prepare for Kerpix. You can't just prepare for Walters. Now you have to prepare for a lefty with a great changeup like that. And then it just takes away from the time that you're preparing for the other pitchers, too. And so, look, if you're Georgia, you technically, in a three-game series, could have a different starter each game of the series. And you don't have to go in the same order. You can mix it up. Adding her was a big get in the transfer portal, especially because she complements the other two pitchers so well. Revolved from a game many, many years ago where you could have one pitcher and basically go all season to now where it's like, you know, you might need three. Yeah. Really good ones. If you want to get to Oklahoma City. Back has fell behind in the count, got it back to full, but Malaulu walks in his on base again. Second two out walk that UCLA has drawn and last time that UCLA walked with two outs, then the able to score a couple of runs in that inning. Addison Bettler, an RBI single back in the second. Her first career collegiate hit popped up to Bacchus. Base runner left on. That's three stranded so far by UCLA. Is Texas a on that list? I, I, I didn't see that. Yeah. They're at the bottom now, mm -hmm. but they are. <laughs> A little history too, back in the 80s. Put on the ground towards second base. And they're going to call her out. They were arguing that Roller was off the bag. JT D'Amico thought she was. And just got back. She did look like it. She did start with her right foot off the bag and then did a little twist to get it to touch the side of the bag. I believe that Tony Baldwin has convinced the umpires to meet about this. And they're going to stay with the outcome. Yeah, yeah, that's what the shot he said. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think she probably was on. Another one of those calls that even if you did review it, it would have been yeah, difficult to. Yeah. 
Jaden Fields has had some good swings today. 0 for 2 in this game, but big first game against Oklahoma State. Three hits in that one. This game in the top of the fifth, Georgia scored first. UCLA took a 2-1 lead. Five unanswered since then by the Dogs. said Coach Baldwin coming into the season that we need to do a better job at scoring runs. He thought that last year they statistically had done some good things, but the thing that he cares the most about is scoring runs. And he really felt like they left some on the table last year. And in his years at Georgia, being the hitting coach and in charge of the offense, to be elite is when they've scored over 400 runs in the season. Last year he said they were only at 352, and he truly believes, of course, that this team, with all their vets and experience and talent, has the personnel to score over 400 runs. That's going to be their goal this year. A lofty goal, but said when he got the numbers, shoot for the stars. Three balls, two strikes. And he felt like last year, too, they were at the bottom of the ball too much. So a really big emphasis on ball flight and trying to hit the middle of the ball. And the other thing, too, is plate discipline. Fields chasing that rise ball well out of the strike zone and helping Tinsley out for the third strikeout of the game for her. Tony Baldwin's lineup card comes out. Looks like Jaden Goodwin's going to bat here. And he told us this stat as well, Mark. He said, when we swing at pitches in the strike zone, we hit about 400. The stat that they were able to track with the technology now, and it's how important it is to swing at pitches in the strike zone and have that patience and discipline. So if it's anywhere in the zone, swing and make contact, they were hitting 400. That's pretty impressive. Great. Because you know most of those aren't right down the middle. Goodwin pinch hitting. Digby spot the eight hole right here. One ball, one strike to Jaden. Well, I really felt like Georgia had the potential to make it to the World Series last year. Fortunately, when the bracket came out, they got the 14 overall national seed, which matched up with FSU at Super Regionals. It's just a tough matchup. Of course, Florida State ended up being the runner up at the World Series to OU. Felt like they had the resume. He thought they were going to be a little bit higher, but he went back to how they performed in February and felt like there were some losses in there that may have hurt their seating. So you know that they're taking these games in February this year serious to put a resume together to at least try to grab it. Top eight seed. Goodwin strikes out and Tinsley sets him down in order for the second time. They were having in the last inning. They went 42 and 15 last year, finished second to Tennessee by two and a half games in the regular season, went 16 and seven. I would definitely say the wins they left on the table was going to Fayetteville and losing to South Carolina early in the SEC tournament. That's, that's one of the areas. It could have helped their seed be a bit better down the left field side, but that was caught on the move by Sidney Chamblin. Well, and because Georgia returned so much, they were picked to finish second in the SEC preseason coaches poll, tied with LSU for that second place, and Tennessee picked to win it. The highlighted teams are the teams that we have here in Clearwater. Uh, but what is surprising is see Alabama and Florida be at six yeah. and seven in the coaches poll. With all the history of yeah. winning the conference championships that they, those two teams have had for yep. a long time, it was just them at the top. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. And we talked about this some yesterday as well. You're right. It was if you were picking who was going to win the SEC for years, pretty much had two choices: Bama or, or Florida. And that's hasn't been the case now for a few years. With the rise of Arkansas, Tennessee winning last year, Georgia playing well. I think that the SEC is 
get a beat deeper this year, top to bottom. Missouri had a great opening weekend. You just can't rely on one weekend. I know that you have to put some things together, but it seems like the SEC collectively is having some big wins. A&M beat Oregon today. You're right about Mizzou. They never really got off the ground last year. I think they got swept by Kentucky to start conference play, and it, it just kind of went downhill from there. They, they, they were a disappointment, but they look to be much better here in 2024. And even Mississippi State a couple of days ago played a doubleheader with Louisiana. Louisiana traveled into Starkville to play them and won both games of those doubleheaders pretty handedly. I mean, I felt like Mississippi State controlled both of those games. And Taryn Mowat from the Pac-12 became the pitching coach at Mississippi State. She pitched at Arizona, won a national championship there as a player. Maybe two, I think. Now you got me thinking, is Maya Fowles one back? I don't know. For sure in 2007, maybe in 06. For sure not in 05 and not in 08. So 06 is the questionable year. If you'd asked me that at 8 a.m. this morning, I may have been able to come up with the answer. Yeah. Now it's 606 Eastern. No shot, 2-2, two -two. swing and a miss. In fact, is he's retired Brady all three times so far. And first strikeout of the day for Lily Backus coming against Maya Brady in her third time going up against her. I love the way that Lily Backus competes. Which I think is another reason why you look at Georgia and you think, yeah, they certainly have a shot to win the SEC when you basically keep what you had and add Lily Backus to that staff. To me, she can be tough to time up because she varies her speeds so much, but I also think that her delivery is a little deceptive with something about the, the jerkiness of her glove hand going above her head as she approaches the beginning of her pitch. Like, I feel like it's just a deceptive beginning of the pitch that's even harder to time up. And then add in the fact that she actually is varying her speeds quite a bit. That's why she can jam some hitters throwing 64, 65. That changeup is pretty consistent at 55. That pitch would not have been a strike in the game played by UCLA prior to this one, but it was there, two balls and a strike. And it needs to be a strike. Yeah. Back to the circle, knocked down by Bacchus. The lefty gets up and throws out. Sandy Pola somehow comes from that lane. You, you might have thought that it was the dolphin statue making that. Noise. Yeah, that was perfectly done. That's diving stop. Wasabi Pola. That's there the first it is. Up. There it is. There it is. Yeah, that's that's actually Kerpix that we've used from a recording that she <laughs> gave us, I believe. Yeah, that's, that's her. Wait, she just opened her mouth at the same time that we did the sound. It kind of made it seem like she just did it fresh, but we haven't we haven't heard it this year. There it is. She hasn't done it live. Had Ellison, the pinch hitter, to begin the inning. And just to put a bow on it, I asked Georgia SID Sean Stevenson if the dolphin noise still lives on. And he said, I did hear it briefly last weekend. So it does. Good night. Smacks one deep to left center field. And what a route by Jalen Alchin. He was looking up, kind of battling the clouds. I should say, actually, Mayonio is out there now. But she had to fight a lot of different elements and didn't track it all the way to left center field. Yeah, it wasn't a straight, direct route whatsoever her face. She said, I don't know how I did that is what it seemed like. It's getting a little windy, too, and that ball went so high, and the wind is blowing in now oftentimes that we've seen the past couple of days. Haven't been as much of a wind, but you can feel that start to blow in now. Getting a little cold. Oh, that was a really good play by Mio. <laughs> That wind was pushing it towards left center field. She had to follow it. Somehow the temperature is 67, but it feels like 69. Now that I don't understand. <laughs> That's to right field. Grant in front of the track makes the catch. So they get Mosley to win the inning. If I could make a dolphin sound, I would make it right here, but I can't. It's still 6-2. 
Beat it 6-2. UCLA bats here in the bottom of the sixth. Coach Inouye Perez huddled up her team during that last half inning. Trying to muster a late rally here down four with the three, four, and five hitters up. With Woolery starting things. Out in the center field, Dallas Goodnight trots in. Really, back is just so efficient, so difficult to time up and square up. 76 pitches here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now she'll face right fielder Megan Grant. And entering this game, and it's just a small sample of innings, right, for Lily Backus, but entering this game, her ERA, 0.41, and her whip, 0.59. Mm. And only, well, I guess, given up two runs in this game, both earned, but been really good. Really good. All ACC second team last year as a sophomore at North Carolina. Went 16 and 14 a year ago, 2.79 ERA. 180 innings pitched, 156 strikeouts. He's gotten some run support in this game, mainly from a four run third. to see pitchers work that change up inside too. I think that oftentimes they think that you just have to throw a change up low and away, low and away. Yeah, that can be effective, but you see her place it inside a couple of times against Grant. You time that one well and wax it into left center field. It's cut off by Goodnight. So a one out base hit for Megan Grant. It's starting to feel it a little bit more. She is. Yeah, three for four game in the win over Florida State earlier. Ends a string of five in a row. In eight of the last nine set down by Bacchus. Ball one to Charlize Palacios, who smacked one into center field in the fourth, but it was caught on the run by Goodnight. I'd like the strike zone of Matt Dial behind the plate in this game. Me too. I totally agree. Sounds like a good pitch to hit. Palacios, good recognition that that was more out over the plate, good swing, but just missed it. His back is spring one two to Charlie's Palacios. Wisconsin still, or actually Oklahoma State took the lead from Wisconsin. OSU up six five in the top of the seventh. Wisconsin has battled early in games, just been hard to finish it out in a couple of instances. Yeah, when we talked with head coach Yvette Healy of Wisconsin, she just flat out told us, you know, any win we get in Clearwater would be a big win. And they've come close several times. They haven't gotten it yet. And you see in there at the bottom left, down 7-5 to Oklahoma State. That one got away. Upper right is Tennessee, Texas on Longhorn Network. With Zeta Pooney up at the plate. The Lady Vols. Texas definitely a team that stood out on opening weekend. Offensively and in the circle to a deep pitching staff for them. Added freshman Tegan Kavan who pitched against UCLA on Friday of opening weekend and looked just really strong. Full count on Palacios. We'll do it again. Next pitch will be number 90 from Lily Backus. 
Deep breath and another 3-2 pitch from the lefty. This is such a good at bat by Palacios. You could tell that at bat by at bat in this game, she started to figure things out. And as a fellow athlete, you want her to win this pitching. You know the type of hitter that she is, bit of a slow start, but you can tell that these at bats are getting better and has a chance here to get a hit off the back this. Which is pitch number 10 in the sequence. And there will be an 11th. It play out to right, kind of in the twilight time a little bit. And that's tough to see at times, but Kearney had it all the way. Two outs after an 11 pitch at bat. Charlie's Palacios as we were. We love chatting with him. Wave and a miss. Tony Baldwin used the term in our conversation with him before Clearwater about people who, who can't get a little too overhyped, a little too crazy. He called it, they need uh, emotional consistency. <laughs> this term. I told him I needed more emotional consistency. In other words, meaning I need you to calm down. <laughs> I need you to relax more. <laughs> yeah, I like that two-word little phrase there, and then the competitive stamina. Like both of those. All in a strike on Alchin. Bacchus had really been economical with the pitch count, and then about a ninth of her total pitch count came to that one hitter, Palacios, in her last at bat. Walk and a run scored in the second for Alchin and fly to left in the fourth. Protecting, keeping it two and two. That change up is just so good. She'll locate it inside and have a little bit of down movement to the lefties and then also can bring it, slice it across. Strikeout to end the inning. Second K of the game for Lily Backus. Heading to the seventh. And a lot of pitches day one of this tournament. And we'll see how they work their pitching staff you know, moving forward. We saw three different pitchers in the first game, but Tinsley started the game and then came in to close that game as well. Ball one strike, Jada Kearney is leading off. They have not retired her in this game. A double, a single, and an intentional walk. They put her on to load the bases and then walk Lindy Ray Davis, who's on deck now to force in a run. Lindy Ray waiting on deck. She has been locked in today. Both Georgia games. Two and two. Out to medium center field. Manuel comes in, hauling in. Brings up Lindy Ray Davis. She's gone yard a couple times today. And she's been her impact player a couple of times yeah. because of those home runs. Line drive over that right field fence. Let me Ray David Heim, Arizona Gatorade player of the year. Two innings against Florida State earlier. Two runs, three hits. 
And she'll face Lindy Ray Davis. Base is empty, one out. Lindy Ray lined out sharply to center in the first. And a two-run home run just to the left of the scoreboard in right field in the third. And then was in, picked up a walk with the bases loaded to force in a run in the fourth after they had walked the hitter ahead of her, Jada Kennedy, to load the bases to face Lindy Ray. And she's worked hard to improve her power over the past couple of years. And I think that you've seen those numbers go up and wanting to build off of what she did last year. Bring even more power into this year. Quite a few right-handed bats in the Georgia lineup, but when you have a couple of lefty power hitters like Lindy Ray Davis and then also Sydney Chambly creates that balance on both sides of the plate. Three balls and a strike. Andy Ray Davis is a freshman in 2022, two homers and 116 at bats, had five last year. Has hit two today in Georgia. And if she is anywhere close to as locked in as she has been today, she will have a career high in home runs. Picks up another walk. She's seeing it really well right now. Yeah, a couple of walks to go along with those home runs, too. And if you're the coaching staff at Georgia, you love the walks just as much as you love the home runs. So they're going to run for their catcher, Lindy Ray Davis. Got a chance to pinch run in the earlier game. We'll do so here as well. For second baseman, Sidney Kuma. Two walks, run scored. 0 for 1 officially in this game. Side edge, a ball and a strike. I hear the dolphin. I heard it too. <laughs> it's Perfect. Not our tape. I don't think so. I don't think they'd mess with us, would they? <laughs> she, she was doing it. She's channeling the dolphin by the ocean here. <laughs> Kuma, base hit right field. Eaton gonna take the base all the way to third as she turns the corner. Oh boy, if Georgia starts hitting while she's doing the dolphin, the dolphin might stick around a little bit more. It's going to sound like the old show flipper. I do want to applaud Matt Dial again in this game like we were talking about before. I think he's done such a good job. Very nice job behind the plate. And he pulled out his lineup card. As if Georgia was uh, going to do something here, but it's like nothing, uh, nothing new, but hey. Got to keep a plate clean, too. Oh, 
I always liked it when the umpire did that. Cleaned off the plate, especially when I was pitching. So I'm like, ah, oh, yes, okay. It's a little bit bigger than I thought that it was <laughs> just a second ago. <laughs> a little bit more room to work. All right, runners at the corners, one out. UCLA wanting to cut off any possible further runs at the plate. Playing in very tight at the infield corners and also in up the middle. Square into bunt, strike taken by Chambly. Chambly hit a two run home run in the third. I think we heard it again. We actually got to see it live with the, with the split box there. Nicely done. You can just feel it coming on. <laughs> A strike out of Chambly. And Caitlin Ter uh, Terry for out number two. Jaden Field steps in. And Field moves back with two outs. Love that change up by Terry. Jaden Terry has a lot of potential and not a deep pitching staff for UCLA. So Caitlin Terry as a freshman has an opportunity to have a lot of innings this year with Taylor Tinsley. Get her to where she needs to be and feeling good in the circle. She could really help out the staff. Ground all to Maya Brady. It's going to be a tough play and she has no play. Haley Eaton, the pinch runner, comes in to score, and Georgia increases the lead to 7-2. to It's a play that soft roller absolutely needs to be made. Would have been the third out of the inning, goes to the backhand, wanted to transfer to throw on the run. Slow developing play. One of those plays, too, you have a lot of time to think about it, but it's a play that needs to be made for the third out. Bulldogs are going to use another pinch runner off the bench. This one for Fields. And it's handed to Villa. Pinch running for the Bulldogs, number 27, Hannah DeVilla. The job for UCLA gets uh, even a bit tougher in the bottom of the seventh. They're going to trail it by at least five. Let the bottom three of the order do up. Emily Digby. No question, Caitlin Terry can pop that glove. <laughs> she can. Where's the upper 60s? as many likely to not have as many strikeouts this year with their pitching staff their defense is going to get tested more and they're going to need to step up and make plays because the more errors free passes more it raises the pitch count for a small pitching staff and gives more looks to the hitters it just all works full circle it's a good pitch right there love to see that change up is working she has such fast arm speed, creates a lot of velocity, but then she's able to keep that arm speed up with her changeup. Nice pitch there, dropped it down to 55. Out to second base, and the underhand toss. I pull it to Woolery. Georgia adds on, they lead by five. Last chance for the Bruins when we come back.
Number four, Georgia. Number 20, UCLA. Last of the seventh. Bruins down five at the bottom three up. And Samala Ulu leading off against Lily Bacchus. Earlier, and in a 14 to 10 win for the Bruins. And 11 hits, three home runs. Lily Bacchus has kept them kind of shackled here in this game. Yeah, it kept them off balance. Over 100 pitches just now thrown for Lily Bacchus. And did a great job mixing speeds, keeping his hitters off balance. And the third time through him. Five. Bruins trying to get the rally going in the dugout. Two and two, Mala Ulu followed by Mettler. Bottom three here for UCLA. Third strikeout for Lily Backus. One out in the seventh. Well, and all three of her strikeouts have been the third time through the order for UCLA, which is just so rare. Usually first time through, you're going to have more strikeouts than third time through, but picking it up a notch here late in the game. Just gets ahead of Mettler. Nothing at two. Long half to first. Digby steps on. Georgia one out away from a 8 0 start to the season. Let's check on the Lady Bow. That's Carlin Pickens pitching for the balls, but that's going to get all the way to the fence in right field. And Texas. Who will score first? I leave 2 0. That game on Longhorn Network. Reese Atwood has had a hot start to the season at the plate for the Longhorns. Taylor Stevens is lined to left and fly to left. Bruins down to their final out. waiting on deck if Stevens can extend this game. A couple of homers in the earlier game today for Maya Brady. It's Florida State. It was so far in this one. 3 1 pitch. Moves down to their final strike. on the hands and a low liner is caught by Mosley at third. Georgia went seven to two and the dogs have started eight and oh on the season. Well and they've won in different ways too. That's what stands out to me from last weekend to this weekend come from behind.